Chapter 1 When Uther Pendragon was King of England, he fought a long war against the Duke of Cornwall. However, Arthur Pendragon finally decided to make peace with the Duke. The Duke and his wife, Igraine, came to the King's palace to discuss the plan for peace. Arthur Pendragon made his guests very welcome, and it seemed that there would soon be peace between the King and the Duke. Unfortunately, the King fell in love with the Duke's wife. He told her that he was in love with her and asked her to betray her husband. Igraine was very angry with Uther Pendragon because she was in love with her husband. The King wants to dishonour me, she told the Duke. I think we should return to our own castle where we will be safe from him. The Duke followed his wife's advice and they left Uther Pendragon's palace secretly. When the king learned that his guests had left so secretly, he was furious. He called his advisers together and asked them what he should do. Send a message to the Duke of Cornwall and order him to come back. One of the advisers suggested, If he refuses, you must take an army and attack him. Arthur Pendragon did as his advisers suggested and sent a message to the Duke ordering him to return at once. The Duke refused to obey him. The King's army laid siege to the Duke of Cornwall's castle. Soon, however, Arthur Pendragon fell ill and no one knew the cause of his illness. One of the King's knights, Sir Ulfius, was determined to find out what was wrong with the king. What is the matter, sir? He inquired. Why have you fallen sick? Arthur Pendragon sighed deeply. Ah, I'm sick for anger and love of Igraine, the king replied. I'll never be well again. Sir Ulfius decided to seek out Merlin, the king's magician. He thought that Merlin might be able to help the king. I know everything already, Merlin told him. I can help him if he agrees to do something for me in return. Tell him that I will come to see him soon. Sir Ulfius hurried back to the king's tent with Merlin's message. I've seen Merlin, he reported excitedly. He says he can help you. But in return, you must agree to do something for him. Where is he? Arthur Pendragon asked quickly. Just then, he looked up and saw that the magician was standing at the entrance to the tent. Come in, come in. He cried excitedly. Merlin entered the tent and stood before the king. I know everything, he told the king quietly. I know that you're in love with Igraine. If you promise to do something for me, I'll help you. I promise. Arthur Pendragon replied eagerly. I'll do whatever you want, Merlin, if you can make Igraine love me. Listen carefully. Merlin instructed him. I'll use my magic to make you look like Igraine's husband. You can go into the castle tonight, and Igraine will think you are the duke. You must tell her that you are tired, and she will take you straight into the bedchamber. You will lie beside her tonight, and she will treat you as if you were her husband. Can you really do that? Arthur Pendragon cried. Merlin smiled at the king's astonishment, and then he spoke seriously. Igraine will have a child by you, he said quietly. When the child is born, you must give it to me, and I will be responsible for looking after it. That's the promise you have to make me. Very well. Arthur Pendragon agreed. I'll make sure that Igraine's child is given to you when it is born. When evening fell, Arthur Pendragon 
Merlin and Sir Ulfius came out of the king's tent. The duke was looking down from the castle walls when the three figures emerged. The duke recognised Arthur Pendragon, and he decided to come out from the castle to attack the king's army. He came out through a little gate in the castle wall and began to fight the enemy soldiers. He was killed before Arthur Pendragon entered the castle. Everything went as Merlin had planned. Igraine thought that Arthur Pendragon was her husband. She took him into the bedchamber and they spent the night together. Merlin came to their bedside very early in the morning and woke the king. You must go, he whispered urgently. You must leave the castle before anyone else wakes up. Arthur Pendragon dressed quickly and left the castle with the magician. Later that day, Igraine heard the news that her husband had been killed the evening before. She realised that the man who had come to her bed in the night was not the duke. But who was he? she wondered. And why did he look like my husband? Igraine said nothing to anyone about the mysterious man who had come to the castle. She mourned her husband with great sadness because she had loved him deeply. She soon became aware that she was carrying the mysterious man's child. Still, she said nothing to anyone. A few months later, Arthur Pendragon's advisers suggested that the king should make peace with Igraine. The Duke, the Duke is dead. dead, they reminded him. There is no cause for war between you and Igraine. Arthur Pendragon agreed to make peace. He told Sir Ulfius that he was still in love with Igraine and that he wanted to marry her. I'll speak to her, sir, Sir Ulfius said. Sir Ulfius went and told Igraine of the king's proposal. She agreed to meet the king and shortly afterwards they announced that they would be married. The marriage between Arthur Pendragon and Igraine was a happy one. He told her that the mysterious man who had come to her bed on the night of the Duke's death was really himself. So the child I'm carrying is really ours! Igraine cried with delight. Chapter 2 Merlin went to see Arthur Pendragon shortly before the child was born to remind the king of the promise he had made. You must give the child to Sir Ector, Merlin told him. The king did as he had promised and Igraine's child was given to Sir Ector. There was now a war in England between Arthur Pendragon and his enemies. Many knights on both sides were killed and the kingdom was unhappy. Merlin supported the king and helped him in his battles and eventually the kingdom was united again. However, Arthur Pendragon fell ill and died. The knights began to fight among themselves over who should be the next king. Merlin had a plan to restore order. He went to see the Archbishop of Canterbury. You must order the knights to come to London at Christmas, he told the Archbishop. Tell them that there will be a miracle in London that will show them who is to be the next king. The Archbishop followed Merlin's advice and all the knights made their way to London just before Christmas. They all went into the great church of the city for the Christmas service and they prayed for the peace of the kingdom. When the service was over, the knights came out of the church. As they walked through the churchyard, they saw a strange sight. There was a huge block of stone standing in the middle of the churchyard 
a large sword was stuck into the top of the stone. The knights stepped forward to look. One of them read some words that were carved into the stone in letters of gold. Whoever pulls this sword out of the stone shall be the next king of England. Several knights tried to pull the sword out of the stone. The great crowd in the churchyard grew increasingly excited as each knight tried his best, but no one was successful. The archbishop watched the knight's efforts and then he addressed the crowd. The knight who can pull the sword out of the stone is not here, he said. We must be patient. He will surely come. The knights agreed that they would wait for the right man to come. In the meantime, they said that they would organise a great jousting match for New Year's Day. Sir Ector heard about the New Year's Day joust and decided to take his son, Sir Kay, and the young Arthur to London. They rode up together and stayed overnight in the city. When they set out in the morning for the joust, Sir Kay forgot to take his sword with him. Go back to the house, he ordered Arthur, and bring my sword to me. Arthur turned back the way they had come and knocked on the door of their lodgings. There was no one in the house. Arthur did not know what to do. But then he remembered that he had seen a sword in the churchyard he had ridden past. I'll get that sword for Sir Kay, he said to himself. Arthur rode quickly to the churchyard and seized hold of the sword. He pulled and the sword came away from the stone. Arthur carried it to the joust and gave it to Sir Kay. I couldn't enter the house, he explained, but I found this sword for you. Sir Kay looked closely at the fine sword that Arthur had given him. He had heard about the sword in the stone, and he realised that this was it. He did not say anything to Arthur, but rode to his father as quickly as he could. This is the sword from the churchyard, father, he cried. I will be the next king of England. Where did you get this sword? Sir Ector asked. Arthur brought it to me. Sir Kay replied. Sir Ector called Arthur and asked him where he had found the sword. It was in the churchyard, Arthur told him. It was sticking out of a great stone. I pulled at it and it came out of the stone. Sir Ector looked at Arthur for a moment. Then he knelt in front of the boy. Sir Kay knelt as well. What are you doing, father? Arthur cried. Why are you kneeling to me? You will be the next king of England, my lord, Sir Ector replied. Then he told Arthur and Sir Kay about Merlin. You are not really my son, he explained to Arthur. You were brought to me by Merlin when you were born. Sir Ector, Sir Kay and Arthur returned to the churchyard together. Sir Ector told Arthur to put the sword back into the stone. Soon there was a crowd of knights in the churchyard. Each of them tried to pull the sword from the stone and each of them failed. The only person who managed to pull it was the young Arthur. He is the rightful king! The people cried. <laughs>